Very good. So we have y equals tangent applied to natural log, which is applied to ax plus b. And the problem is asking us to uh, differentiate the function. You can write y prime, or you can write dy over dx. See, y prime or f prime without the variable is kind of difficult to, I wouldn't say difficult, but it's not very clear. Thank you, Tom. I'll staple it in a minute. Or is it stapled? Stapled. It's stapled. Very good. Okay, so now when I write dy over dx, this is very clear. It means that I'm differentiating function y with respect to x. So this is also a um, useful notation. First, I see that this is the first function, this is the second function, and this is the third function. I do have to use the chain rule. And I cannot have addition or subtraction in there. Everything has to be a product. I differentiate the outer function first. And I remember that tangent prime is secant squared of all this <coughs> natural log ax plus b multiplied by. Now I reach the natural log. So natural log prime is 1 over ax plus b. And inside now I have to differentiate the third function. And that is a. So I'm going to put a at the top because, as you know, I always run out of room. No surprises there. Very good question. Anything else? Is there anything else you tried? Anything else you'd like to go back to? <coughs> yes, please, Robbie. Um, on the, the checklist on the first page. Uh, yes, let me take a look. Yes. Can we do a problem like 68? 68 on 182 and 183? Yes. Good. 68. 68. Yes, uh, we did 67. No, we did not. I don't think we did 67, did we? No, let's do 67. Did we do 67? I don't think so. <clears throat> Is that good enough, you think? 67? OK. So we are given f of x. And this is x squared plus 1 for x less than 1. And it's x plus 1 for x greater than or equal to 1. Is f differentiable at 1? That's the first question. And then part two, it says sketch the graphs of f and f in f prime. Sketch the graphs of f and f prime. Very good. The same idea at what numbers of uh, is the following function g differentiable? Same idea. And give a formula for g prime and then sketch the graphs. You'll tell me if this is good enough. OK. So. What I would do with this problem is, number one, I know they're asking me directly to show if it's differentiable at 1. But first, I will, I will check whether it's <coughs> continuous at 1. Obviously, x squared plus 1 is always continuous. x plus 1 is always continuous because they are polynomials. They're polynomials. So I'm going to say continuity at x equals 1. If the function is not continuous at x equals 1, I will immediately say, of course, it's not differentiable. differentiable. Well, it turns out that limit of x squared plus 1, when x approaches 1 from the left, equals the limit of x plus 1 when x approaches 1 from the right and equals f of 1. They happen to all be 2. So there is no problem there. The function is continuous. But is this sufficient to conclude that it's differentiable? No, because you cannot have Except cos, corner, corner or vertical tangent. Correct. Very good. So now I will find the formula for f prime. But look here for a second. I will only say x less than 1 and x greater than 1. I will not discuss, is it blurry? Is it better? 
So I will not discuss x equals 1 just yet. So what is the derivative of the first branch? Good. What is the derivative of, of, derivative of the second branch? One. One. Very good. Now I will discuss differentiability at one. So remember, let's take a look at this. Let's suppose this is the point that has x equals one. The function is differentiable at this point if there is one, only one tangent. In other words, the slope of the tangent on this side equals the slope of the tangent on this side. So limit from 2x as x approaches 1 from the left must equal limit as x approaches 1 from the right of 1. But they are not the same. This one is 2 and this one is 1, which means that the slope before 1 on the left-hand side of 1 is 2, and the slope after 1 on the right-hand side of 1 will be 1. So it is a cusp or a corner. So the function is not differentiable at 1. So although continuous, I will say not differentiable at x equals 1. Now they are asking us to graph these two functions. So they are both piecewise defined functions and I recommend the following chart. This for f and this for f prime. And negative infinity to infinity obviously. One must be in the chart, zero must be in the chart. We graphed these piece ones defined functions a long time ago. So to the left hand side of one, there is a parenthesis. And to the right hand side of one is a bracket. This piece for function f is using x squared plus one, if you remember, and this piece uses x plus one. So I'm gonna say negative one, negative one squared is one, one plus one is two. <clears throat> I plug in 0, I get 1. I plug in 1, I get 2. I plug in 1, I get 2. I plug in 3, I get 4. Obviously, the function is continuous. Now, this is something we did before, right? Any questions on this? No. But now, I have to graph this. Here's how I graph it. First of all, I mean the, the table. There is no point in here. So on the left hand side of 1, this will be 2. And on the right hand side of 1, this will be 1. So I plug in, in 2x, so this is all 1 everywhere. And I will plug in 2x. So when I plug in 0 in 2x, I get 0. Uh, when I plug in negative 1, I get negative 2. <coughs> So again, here I used 2x, and here I used 1 for the derivative. So now make sure that you have enough room. I will not graph them here because I don't have enough room to put one um, graph under the other. The top graph will be f. The bottom graph will be f prime. So I have to move to the next page. So. This will be the graph of f, and this will be the graph of f prime. Okay, so negative 1, 2, uh, 0, 1, 1, 2, with an open point. Why open? Because of parentheses. I'll come back and fill it in because these numbers are the same. So this is quadratic. Then I graph the uh, right hand side of 1, but it's 1 comma 2, so I have to fill it in. And then 3 comma 4. So 
So this is the graph of f. Now for the same points, I graph f inverse. When x is negative 2, here. Did I put this at... No, no I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so it's correct. So at, at negative 1 is negative 2. At 0 is 0. At 1 is 2 with an open point. I'm asking you for a second um, to look at these two pieces. What type of function is this? Qua quadratic. What type of function will it will be its derivative? Good. So now if this is linear, what type of function will it be its derivative? Constant, exactly. Very good, very good. So now at uh, 1 is 1, at 3 is 1, and so on and so forth. As you see, the slope on the left-hand side is 2, the slope on the right-hand side is 1. In other words, here, the slope is 2 and the slope is 1. That's why there is a gap in the derivative, which means the function is not differentiable at 1. When the derivative is not continuous, of course. Is this better? This is what I would do with the other problem. Very good. Other questions? Thank you for asking that. Should I try this yes, please. Do I need to staple it? Yes. I will staple it. Thank you. No problem. Very good. Anything else? Very good question. Thank you. Anything else? So our target is to finish Chapter 3 this week and Tuesday. So the target is the following Thursday the checklist will be due and we will review and hopefully two weeks from today we will have our second test. Okay? And then we can start chapter four. Okay, but we still have work to do in chapter three. So I'd like to take you back to 3.7 to look at one more application. On page 233 I would like to look at problem one because I selected a similar one on the checklist. One on page 233. So let's read it together. It has a long list of questions. A particle moves according to the law of motion, S equals F of T, for T equals T greater than or equal to zero, where T is measured in seconds and S in feet. So I take my notes. Uh, for problem one, f of t equals t cubed minus 12t squared plus 36t. And um, this is measured in feet, and time is measured in seconds, and of course time has to be greater than or equal to zero. Find the velocity at time t, part a, the velocity at time t. Well, we know that the velocity is nothing else but the derivative of, yes, different, the der derivative of motion or derivative of distance, which will be 3t squared minus 24t plus 36. Every time we determine a derivative from moving forward, it is wise, if possible, in this case, to always factor it. We may do it now, or we may do it when we need it. But I recommend let's do it now. These three terms have three in common. Then t squared minus 8t plus 12. Is there a way? Oops, I didn't mean to write 0. Of course, it's not an equation, sorry. So is there any way to factor this?
Very good. Very good. Six and two. So then we have it set up. Very good. In part B, um, what is the velocity of the three seconds? So the velocity of the three seconds will be nothing else but V of three. And look at this. This is much easier to multiply. How much is how much is three minus six? Negative three times three, negative nine. And how much is three minus two? That's it. Negative nine. Measurement unit, please. Yes. Feet per second. Very good. Same thing. Close. When is the particle at rest? When is the particle at rest? I'm in my car and I drive. And when, when is my car at rest? Zero. When the velocity is zero. Obviously. If there is no velocity, it's at rest. Good. So then 3, t minus 6, t minus 2 equals zero. Therefore, there are two options, t equals and t equals. Very good. Part D, when is um, the particle moving in a positive direction? So when the particle is moving in the positive direction is when its velocity is positive, either going up or going to your right. <coughs> when is the par particle moving in the negative direction is when the velocity, the vector, the velocity vector is going to your left or going down. So in this case, I will say positive direction when v of t is positive. Negative direction, because we need to discuss both, when v of t is less than 0. I recommend the following little chart table. I'm going to copy v of t here, which is 3, t minus 6, and t minus 2, so I can remove my page. Okay. So this is V of T. However, I would like to um, add two lines here before V of T. Two more rows. I jumped. The first row will be um, studying the sign of t minus 6, then this is t minus 2, and this is v of t. I need to separate them. Because I, I don't want to just give you the shortcut. I want to explain what I'm doing. So this is t minus 6. Okay. So obviously, time is from 0 to infinity. We're told that it's greater than or equal to 0. We found that the velocity is 0 at very good. So we know that t minus 6 is 0 when t is 6. And we know that t minus 2 is 0 when t is 2. What happens to the velocity when t is 2 or 6? Zero. Correct. So here's the next step. So let me write this note for you here. What does this chart represent, or what am I doing with it? We study the sign of v of t. So this chart is used to study the sign of v of t. But I have to study the sign of each factor. Notice that I did not include 3. What is the sign of 3? It doesn't even count. doesn't matter. OK. So now, what type of functions are these? Correct. What type of slope? Right. So they look like this. 
They must come from what type of values? And go to after they cross the x-axis. So before this crosses the x-axis, it must be a negative number. After it crosses the x-axis, it must be a positive number. Just plug in a number and that's what you get. Plug in 2, 2 minus 6 is negative. Plug in 10, 10 minus 6 is positive. Only because this, the linear function has a positive slope. Same thing for this. Negative before it crosses the x-axis and positive afterwards. I see three subintervals. 1, 2, 3. When we multiply these two factors, what is the sign of v of t? When we multiply these two factors, what is the sign of v of t? And when we multiply these two factors, what will be the sign of v of t? Very good. So here's our conclusion. Any questions here? Matt, are you OK? Any questions? Any questions? OK. So I will write this. v of t positive when t is in which interval? Perfect. We do not use brackets. This is the trend. We talk about the trend. So v of t, although we are not asked for the negative, I like to write it. When t is in the interval, Perfect. So, <clears throat> when is the particle moving in a positive direction? From zero, two seconds it goes to your right, then it turns for four seconds till second six, and then turns and it goes all the way to positive. And the next question says, uh, find the total distance I, I would like to draw the diagram and then we find the total distance. Or let's find it, let's keep it in order, it doesn't matter. So E. We're asked to find the total distance. So obviously there is a distance when the velocity is positive, which will be s of 2 or f of 2 minus f of 0. Then there is a, a distance in which the velocity is negative, but it doesn't matter. The, the particle continues to accumulate distance, right? So that will be f of 6 minus f of 2. And there is a distance between, and we're asked between uh, 0 and 8 seconds. So there will be a th third piece from f of 8 minus f of 6. And we do have to use absolute value. So the absolute value of f of 2 minus f of 0, because we are accumulating distance no matter with which direction the particle is going, plus the absolute value of f of 6 minus f of 2, and plus the absolute value of f of 8 minus f of 6. I will put the function in the graphing calculator. Determine all these values and find the total distance. Total distance. Any questions so far? Any questions? Is this okay, what we're trying to do? Okay, so in y equals, let's clear whatever we have. So the function was uh, x cubed minus uh, 12x squared, and then plus 36x. I go to second and table, make sure that, uh, yes, it is still there. So second and table. And I plug in 0, 2, 6, and 8. Of course, 0 is 0, but uh, let's plug all of them, 2, 6, and 8. So the first distance will be f of 2 minus f of 0, which will be 32 minus 0 plus 
f of 6, which is 0 minus f of 2, and plus f of 8, which is 32, minus f of 6, which is 0. So it's 32 plus 32 plus 32, which is 96. Measurement unit. Measurement unit for the total distance. I'm sure we know that uh, the measurement unit for distance is. Are we on strike? So what is the measurement used for 96? Good. Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Everything OK? Yes? Everything OK? OK. Um, draw a diagram to illustrate the motion of the particle. OK. So at t equals 0, the particle is here. It goes in the positive direction, 2 seconds. It goes back 4 seconds. So if this is 2 and this is, so this is 4. Right here at t equals 6. And then it turns around and it goes in the positive direction forever. So this is at 6, and right here it will be at 8. So 2, 4, 2. OK. Uh, find the acceleration at time t and after 3 seconds. A of t is? v prime of t or f double prime of t, correct? Yes? Good. So we had, um, what was the derivative? So then we have, OK, 6 t minus 24. Agreed? We're also asked to find a of 3. Is this OK, everyone? Any questions? Any questions? So 3 times 6, 18. 18 minus 24, negative 6, measurement unit. Remember, the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So the top is coming from the velocity, and the bottom is coming from the time. So that's why the measurement unit is very good. It's feet per second, everything per second. That's why it's feet per second squared. Very good. Um, next one, our next item, uh, which is h, is it's asking us to graph f velocity and acceleration on the same coordinate system with the graphing calculator. We will do that in a minute. But I would like to analyze part uh, last one. When is the particle speeding up? When is the particle speeding up or slowing down? Again, I recommend a table, the exact same table that we looked at a few minutes ago with f and f prime. Same idea. So t, 0 to 8, v, a, decision.
From the previous chart, I copy what I have for velocity. What do I know? Here's what I know. I know that at 2 and 6, the velocity is 0. Before 2, the velocity is positive. In the middle, negative, and outside, positive. So positive, negative, positive. Now, I look at the acceleration. The acceleration a of t is 6 t minus 24. When is a of t 0? Four seconds. Very good. So I have 4 and 0 here. I look at the acceleration. It's a linear function with what type of slope? So it looks like this. Before it's 0, it must be negative, and then it will be positive. How many subintervals do I see now? A lot. 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's analyze each separately. I am telling you that the velocity is going this way, but the acceleration is pushing it, the particle backwards. Since these two forces do not work together, I ride my bike and I have a headwind. I try to go forward and the wind is pushing me backwards. So the velocity is going in one way direction and the acceleration in the opposite direction. They're not working together. What does the particle do? That's it. Because the velocity and the acceleration do not work together, it's slowing down. Let's look in the second one. In the second subinterval between 2 and 4, the velocity is negative, but so is the acceleration. So the velocity goes this way, the acceleration goes this way, they are helping one another. What is the particle doing at the end of the day here? Yes, yes. What happens between 4 and 6? The velocity is negative, the acceleration is positive. Slowing down. And between 6 and 8, what happens? They're helping each other, speeding up. <coughs> and now let's go back to our graphs, to the previous um, item, H. And let's put in all three. We have the function. I want to put in the derivative, which is the velocity, which is 3x squared minus 24x plus 36, and then the acceleration, which is 6x minus 24. Now I have to think about the, the uh, viewing window. Let's go to the viewing window. I only want to see 0 to 8. I don't care for anything else. I don't know how high, how low. I have no idea. I'm going to put negative 20, negative 40 to positive 40 with a scale of 10. I have the advantage that I, I will get this, you know, a little bit of a graph here that you probably don't. So now I click on graph. Careful, we're going to see the cubic function, which is the f. This is the cubic function. Here comes the quadratic, which is the velocity. And here comes the linear, which is the acceleration. So now let's take a look. Between, so forget about the function, forget about the blue, just look at black and red. As you see, between 0 and 2, both of them are, one, uh, one is positive, one is negative. The particle is slowing down. Between 2 and 4, they're both under the x-axis, so the particle is speeding up. Between 4 and 6, one is above, one is below the particle is slowing down. Between 6 and 8, they're both above the x-axis. 
so the particle is speeding up. Any questions on this? So what other idea we come out of this with is that this was a cubic function. And of course, its derivative must be quadratic. The derivative of a quadratic obviously must be a linear. Any questions? Any questions on this? Any questions? So you have a similar problem on the checklist. If we need, uh, when you start working on this, when if we need other examples, we'll look at other examples. But if you follow this step by step, you'll have no difficulties. Okay, so we do not cover 3.8, it's part of pre-calc. Okay, the exponential growth and decay. We did this in pre-calculus. So I'd like to start 3.9. Now 3.9 related rates is, in my opinion, the most com complex, com yes, please. Thank you, thank you, sorry. So in my opinion, related rates is the most complex topic of this chapter. Why? Because it really puts together everything we know from algebra, from geometry, from calculus. So what does this mean? So let's first discuss what related rates um, refer to. Um, as I mentioned before, I did a lot of sports in my life so, so far, and I hope to continue. And um, I use a exercise ball every now and then for my back. So sometimes it needs pumping air because it's losing air, right? Like our, our tires, for example. Just imagine you're pumping air in your tires. What happens? At least three functions that depend on time happen. Number one, the volume increases. We pump air in the exercise ball, and volume increases, right? The surface increases from this to this, right? Uh, what else changes? The radius from, I don't know, this to this. So these are three functions. And they're functions of time. And their rate of change, their rate of change, their rates of change are related. I'm not saying that one is double than the other or one third of the other. I'm just saying because they happen at the same time, they are somehow related. And that's what we mean, related rates. Functions that that change at the same time, not with the same rate but they change at the same time, so their changes happen at the same time. That's why we say they are related. Their change or changes are related. So we could spend a month on this topic alone, but we're going to look at the uh, basic idea and problems from page 248. Uh, let's start with problem 15. Let's read the problem. Then I'll, I'll walk you through and we'll discuss how we think about the related rates. Two cars start moving from the same point. One travels south at 60 miles an hour and the other travels west at 25. One more time. I stopped after the first sentence. Two cars start moving from the first, same point. Right, two sentences. One travels south at 60 miles an hour and the other west at 25 miles an hour. Enough for me to come up with a drawing. So if they start at this point, one goes west, one goes south. This one that goes south, it says at 60 miles an hour. And this one at 25 miles an hour. At the same time. Now I read on. At what rate is the distance between the cars increasing? Two hours later. So obviously, at any point in time, so 
So now, if you follow my explanation here, I know I look silly, but <clears throat> maybe I can make some. It will trigger your memory. Okay, so this is what happens. So there is a distance between these two. Initially, it was zero, right? But now it's increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing. And this is a function. At zero is zero. One minute, five feet. Two minute, 10,000 feet. You know what I mean? So this is a function. They're all functions. This is a function because it's the distance function, right? It, when the, party, when the uh, car is moving west, its distance changes, right? Okay, the same thing with the south one. And now we're only interested in how fast this distance is changing. So I'm going to name this x. I'm going to name this y. And of course, at any point in time, from the moment they start till I call them up and say stop, which I won't, but you know what I mean, at any point in time, this triangle is valid. If it's one minute later or 10 hours later, this triangle is valid. OK. So obviously, I would immediately say that if x is the distance covered by the first one and y is the distance covered by the second one, I can immediately write the relationship between x, y, and w at any point in time. What would be the relationship between these three functions of time? So if you want to uh, be very clear, you can say x is a function of time called f. y is another function of time called g. And z, I'm sorry, it's not z, it's w. w is another function of time called h. You don't have to, but I just want to point out that all these three are functions, and they all depend on time. So I gave them three different names. OK, so coming back. What can I write? There must be an equation. There must be a relationship that I can come up with. Yes, please. Pythagorean theorem. Correct. So you do um, the root of x squared, or you can just do x squared plus y squared equals x squared. Excellent. So now let's identify what this represents. So if we're told 60 miles per hour, what does this mean? Correct? Awesome. Which means the derivative of y with respect to with respect to t. So this is dy over dt. Perfect. What does 25 miles per hour mean? Awesome. What do you think I'm going to do next? And what is the problem? What is the question? So one more time. At what rate is the distance between the cars increasing two hours later? Let's write what we are asked to determine. What are, am I asked to determine? Of course. When, when time is? So this is the question. I want to make a remark or a note. This piece must be forgotten till the very last step. Why? Because what do I have to find first before I plug it in? The derivative or the function, exactly. So please make yourselves a note. This number cannot be used anywhere till the last second of the solution. Never to be used before the last step. Good. So let's summarize what we have. We have dx over dt. We have dy over dt. We are after dw over dt. I have an equation that has all these three functions in it. 
how do I determine dw over dt? What should I do? Something I learned in this chapter, which is called implicit differentiation. That's my only hope. That's my only hope. The left-hand side. Uh, 2x times dx over dt plus must equal 2 Now we understand that these are three related rates. The rate of change of x, the rate of change of y, and the rate of change of w. They are in a relationship. Perfect. Of course, I will simplify both sides by 2. Simplifying, dividing both sides by 2. This is what I'm interested in. I will solve for it, dividing both sides by w. So dw over dt equals x dx over dt plus y dy over dt divided by w. We're almost there. Let's see what we have and let's see what we don't. We do have dx over dt. It was given to us s. Awesome. We have dy over dt was given to us as Now, I'm able, I have an expression for dw over dt, and now I'm going to say, fine, I can plug in and evaluate this when t is 2 hours. Remember what w is, is the square root of x squared plus y squared, right? From the Pythagorean theorem? Okay, good. So now I have to find x and y. What does x represent? The distance covered by the first, by the uh, car going west, after two hours. What is the distance covered, assuming uniform motion? And you can say, but that's not real. You don't start from your home or your parking lot directly at 60 miles an hour. That's true. But we assume uniform motion. So what is the distance covered by the first car, by the car going west, in two hours? So it's 25 times, very good. So then this is 50. So this is 50 as well. What is the distance covered by the car going south in two hours? One twenty, and this will be one twenty squared. Okay. Although the calculation may not be difficult, I recommend putting everything in the calculator at once. As fifty times twenty-five plus one twenty times sixty divided by the square root of fifty squared plus one twenty squared. If you have the number, give it to me. If not, let's do it together. So in the graphing calculator, put the left parenthesis for the top. Left parenthesis, 50 times 25, and plus 120 times 60. Close the parenthesis, divide by the square root. And you know me, I have to have parentheses, 50, 50 squared, and plus 120 squared. Any questions on this? And I press Enter. OK, 65. Without measurement unit, it doesn't mean anything. What is the measurement unit for 65? 65 of course. It's the rate of change of distance with respect to time. So this is our first example of related rates. Three functions, they were changing, of course, their functions, so they were the, the, uh, their rate of change 